Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Rosetta Technologies SurPrint Artist Showcase. And uh, let me introduce our host to you today. Our host is Rob Huller. He's president and founder of Rosetta Technologies, where we engineer microprinters, toner, and software used by businesses, credit unions, financial institutions, and banks to print or process checks. At one time in the way back, Rob likes to say he also made a decent living as a studio potter on Cape Cod. His current passion project is making a line of affordable ceramic decal printers designed for studio potters, glass artists, enamelists, schools, and universities. We call it SurPrint. Rob, you've got the podium. Thanks, Karen. Appreciate that. So today we have um, a really wonderful person and a great potter who's been using surfprint for quite some time and has been through all of the ups and downs, the ins and outs, the pains and the tears and the sweat and the cursing, I would imagine, of, of getting started with uh, ceramic decals using this process. Um, but I think we've, we've covered a lot of ground and things are working well. So I wanna introduce Rebecca graves Prowse of Graves Co. Pottery in Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, Rebecca and I were talking a while back uh, and, and talking about cutting out decals, et cetera. And uh, she has begun using a device called a Silhouette Cutter, which is a computer driven kind of graphics program with a, a cutting machine attached to it. So I think we're gonna spend the bulk of our time um, having Rebecca educate us um, uh, on using this. And so maybe if any of the users out there want to acquire one of these machines, at least we can get you up the learning curve um, thanks to the efforts of Rebecca. But I think first what we'd really like to see is get a little tour of, of Rebecca's studio and maybe look at some of the work she's been doing. So Rebecca, welcome. Thank you. And take it Thank away. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. It's really nice to be here. And it's been really great working with you through this process and the learning curve of not only the printer, but also like figuring out our glaze formulas and the kiln firing programs and all those things that are beyond the printer. You've been an immense help and I really appreciate that. So when um, I started actually putting the, the transfers into production for my wholesale clients and we were cutting out large numbers of them, uh, my good friend Becca Otis from Five Lines Pottery does production work for me. And she was just kind of walking by my desk, watching me cut them out with scissors. And she goes, you should get a Cricut or a Silhouette and do that man do that automatically instead of manually. And like, just kept walking. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I, said, I need to get a what? <laughs> so um, in the process of getting that, we actually expanded the studio. So I have a 4,200 square foot studio on the east side of Indianapolis where we do all of our production work. Today, I'm actually in my private studio um, that we just moved into about a month ago. Um, this incredible conference room opened up as an available space in the apartment loft building that we live in. And I was able to snag it for a personal design studio. So that's where we are today. So I'll give you a quick tour. I'm gonna flip my camera around here. So this building is actually an 1850s uh, furniture factory that was abandoned for years. And last fall, we were sitting out in this courtyard and I said, nobody's using that conference room. It's coronavirus. No one's conferencing right now. They should give me that for a private studio. Um, and back in January, the building manager messaged me and she goes, hey, would you be interested in a private studio here on the premises? We've got this conference room no one's using. So here I am. Um, so I'm doing all of our product photography for the website here now. Um, we've got concrete floors and brick walls and a wall of light, and it's just fabulous. And then this is where I'm doing most of my design work. We're not really doing production here. I'm just doing design work, office work. Um, I moved the printers over here so they're not in such a dusty environment. Um, so I've got my red and my black printer right there. And then the silhouette. So it's just about a thousand square foot space, design room. 
area to think and you know go through all of those Google searches for all of the different things we've been trying to figure out how to do. I have a Glowforge laser printer as well, which I'm using for um, creating some custom tools for the studio. So that's the workspace. Great. And the other studio um, is in an old industrial building as well. And we have 11 people over there working uh, five or six days a week. So that's a studio. And primarily what we're doing is um, production work, private label for other clients, and then production wholesale for coffee shops and breweries and different companies that want product with their images on it or with a specific saying, that sort of thing. So I'm doing a lot of things like this now. And you've made that a lot easier. So this is the fun part here. Here's the silhouette cutter that we got. I ended up getting the 15 inch. It's completely unnecessary for a potter to get one this big unless you want to cut sign vinyl as well. Um, back in my in my golden days, I was a regional director for a department store and did a lot of sign vinyl. And I also had a graphic design firm and did a lot of sign vinyl. So when I was getting ready to buy this and we were also in the process of moving into this space, I realized it was going to cost me $100 more to buy the bigger one. And it was going to cost me $300 to have someone else cut sign vinyl for me. So I just got the bigger one for that purpose. Um, it's a little overkill for doing the transfers, but also kind of fun. When you get the Cameo, it does not give you any instructions on really how to set it up other than how to take it out of the box and plug it in. It's Bluetooth enabled. And on my Mac, it just automatically connected. It opens up. And it's got this little tray down below for doing um, vinyl, and you can put a roll of vinyl on here. You can also use this for a roll of Tyvek for doing resist images that you would lay over and then put slip on. So if you're doing a multi-layer thing with resist images and then transfer images over that, this is actually kind of fun because you can cut vinyl resist images or Tyvek resist images with that. The cool thing about the new Cameo is it has a cutter. You can actually put two cutter blades in it if you want to. It also has a little laser eye that will read a registration mark on what you print. So what we figured out is we can actually print a sheet with those registration marks on it. The little eye, when I put this into the cutter, will read those registration marks and then it knows exactly where to cut and it will cut details right around all of my image. So that was that was the main reason that we decided that we wanted to go with the silhouette over any other brand of cutter. Um, and then besides that, I have my handy paper cutter here, which I use for cutting the donor paper. Um, and just, just a note here, Rebecca is, is using the lamination method. Mm -hmm. And I, we posted a blog on Surfrent um, where I was kind of going on about the saga of decal paper. Um, it didn't used to seem to be much of an issue, but I think with the advent of COVID, we noticed a number of decal manufacturers closing down and it began to... Uh, to get hard to get the paper that we had been using successfully, which was all one step, not, not the lamination method. Um, so I kind of gradually started looking at the lamination method and I realized there were some advantages to it. I think the image quality is not only better, but I think it's more consistent from sheet to sheet when you use this method. So uh, it confuses a lot of people when I'm talking to folks who are interested in buying Serpent you know, what's the difference? Well, it's really just another step. What you're doing is actually making a decal sheet. You're using the backing paper, what they call white water slide, which is the absorbent kind of heavy paper that has a thin uh, coating of a release agent called dextrin psychomarabic. And then you have a donor paper, which has a very thin backing and then the actual decal film. And so as Rebecca was showing there, just taking a sheet of the de of the decal donor paper, um, and she's printed on the white water slide there, and then she's going to sandwich that 
with the film side down and then run it through a laminator. And I, you know, we're using just a, a Scotch TL906. I think Rebecca, you're going to move up a little bit and get the, the other mm -hmm. brand. Um, and, and that's probably best for you because you are really in, you know, you really are a production potter. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. We're doing, sometimes yeah. we're doing a hundred to 200 of a single yeah. image at a time. Yeah. So this is the TL906. Um, I learned a hard lesson the day before yesterday, though. If you put it in wrong with the film side up, it's almost an irretrievable jam because the film melts to the roller and you mm -hmm. can't get it out. So I had to, I bought a new one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to you. Awesome. So I'm going to, what I want to do is, um, I'll show you how to set up the file in Silhouette because what I had been doing previously was using Photoshop to lay out all of my sheets and printing them and then hand cutting them. Um, when I got the Silhouette uh, cutter, I realized that I need to use their software to do the layout if I want to do that print and cut, which is the term to search if you're actually looking for step-by-step -step instructions from Silhouette, it's print and cut or stickers. Um, but the reason I needed to use their software was because I need to get those registration marks on the corners of the sheet for it to read. So it knows where we've printed, so it knows where to cut. And then the other thing that I discovered in the process of doing that is when I do the donor paper, if I cover the entire sheet like this and then laminate it, it leaves, it has that film over those registration marks and then the cutter has a hard time reading them. So what I've learned to do is I'll cut this on my paper cutter so that those registration marks are exposed. And when I do that, then it can read the registration marks, but it still covers everything I need it to cover on the sheet. So I'm gonna cut that real quick and laminate this while we do the, the setup. There we go. So now, it doesn't have to be fully exposed, but I've got the black corner there. There's a little bit of a line showing here, and there's a little bit of a line showing here, and that's enough for the eye to read on the cutter. So I'm gonna run this through. And then um, doing the setup is really, really simple compared to some of the other programs I've used for doing setup in the past. So doing the setup with the Silhouette software is meant for an everyday user to do, somebody who doesn't have a graphic background. It's really easy to get the images in there and it's really easy to trace them for the cut line with like just a couple clicks of buttons. So I'm gonna come over to the other side here and share my screen and show you the fun stuff there. Uh, this is mine. in the Silhouette application? This is in the Silhouette Studio application, and it's free software. You do not have to have the Cameo Cutter to use the software, as far as I know. Like, when I got it, I didn't have to like, put in a security number or anything like that for it. I was able to just start using it. So you can actually get that software and play with the software and see how that feels before making the commitment to the actual cutter, which is kind of a nice little bonus. So you can see on my screen here, I have the, um, actually, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. You can see on my screen here, I've got the layout and I've got all of these little marks. So right here, the little black square is that registration mark. This corner is a registration mark and this corner is a registration mark. It's also showing these little gray hashed out areas. And those are areas that you don't want to put anything that's getting printed or cut because it may not cut correctly based on where that eye is reading things. And then around my images, you'll see this red line. And that red line is actually the cut line. And this red line around the outside is the safety zone. I'm trying to keep everything within that. So I'm going to start a new folder so I can walk you through everything here. Um, so to start to get an image on here, 
it took me forever to figure this out because I was trying to figure out how to add an image and all you have to do is find your image and drag and drop it on there. It's that simple. Yeah, I was going to ask about that, so that is simple. Yes. That's not going to be the right file. Nope. And if you put the wrong one on there, sometimes it'll freeze. I'll just start a new one. Um, I think that there are times that I end up pushing the software probably a little bit harder than it's intended to go, but it will freeze. And I've learned to just either walk away and go get a drink or I'll um, just start fresh with something new. Okay, let's do this one. We're going to do this snake. So you just drag and drop it onto here. Um, I have it set up for an eight and a half by 11 sheet. You see over here on the page setup menu, it's asking for this machine, which is the Cameo Plus. It's asking what size cutting mat. I have the 15 by 15, you can change it to the 12 by 12, whatever you're doing. And then the media size is eight and a half by 11. You can change that to whatever you need it to be. The next little grid up here, if you press that, it'll you could show the grid or you could turn the grid off. I like to have it just for a frame of reference for measurements, but it's not necessary. And then the third one up here is the registration marks. If you turn that on, you'll see those pop off and on right there. So I want to stay not just inside this red line, but I also want to make sure I don't have anything on these gray hash marks. Resize my image. I'm going to go back over here to the basics. So the next thing that I'll do is click on the image and there's a toolbar over here on the right. If you hover over things, it will tell you what each thing is. So you can just kind of hover for a second and it will give you an idea of what everything is. So since this is um, a black and white JPEG image, I like to use JPEG or PNG. Um, I'm going to do a trace of this image to create kind of just a black overlay on it. And you can select the trace area. And you see it's starting to turn that black kind of yellow, and that's what it's going to be tracing. So once you get that where you want it to be, we're going to do a solid fill. We could also do an outline if we wanted to. So you could play with those, see what works best for you. What I'm going to do is a trace and detach. And then just click somewhere on the screen. And while that thinks, I'm going to run my piece through the laminator one more time. And of course, it's going to choose this moment to take a while to do this. Usually, it doesn't take this long. That might be a pretty complicated image, though. So once this is done tracing, it's just going to have the outline of the snake itself, not the entire rectangle image. And that we'll be able to use to create a cut line. So let's zoom in a little bit. We're basically kind of turning this into a vector image. I'm going to Command Z and put that back where it was. Let's zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing here. And this is not a uh, web-based software. You will actually download it to your computer, which is really handy. A lot of the other cutters that are out there, you have to use web-based software and be connected to the internet. Um, so you can see it's like traced parts of your image. Sometimes weird things will happen. Command Z is my friend. 
But for the most part, I can go over to my main image. I'm going to select it. I'm going to come down here to this little star on the right hand side menu. And what that one's going to do is give me my outline to cut. Okay. It's not wanting to do it because it's such a detailed image. I'm going to right click and group everything because it's trying to cut out those big rectangles, which is not normal. I did this image last night and had no problems. Um, so of course, while I'm doing a demo, it's going to give me some little fits. All right, here we go. Let's try this. So we want to do the offset selected shape. And the distance, once it lets me have this, <clears throat> we're going to set the distance of the offset. And the offset is the line that the cutter is actually going to cut. Here we go. Oh, goodness. So because this is a really complicated image, it's like remaking every single one of those tiny little lines. That's why this is taking a long time. Let me pick a different, easier image to do. So it's working right now, right? It's, it's yeah, it's, it's working. Yeah. This one's going to take a couple extra steps. Um, Let me drop in an easier image here that won't keep getting bogged down. Here's a good one. I'll drop this PNG in here. I'm gonna make this smaller so we can put this on a mug. And I'm just clicking and dragging on the corner. You don't have to hold down shift or anything special. I'm going to go over and turn on those registration marks. Just click the on button there and then go back to the main screen. So I have this laid out kind of where I want it. You can right click, copy and paste. If you want to do multiples of the same image on a page, and you can use this little green arrow to rotate. If you click on the image, you can rotate. If you hold down shift, it will only go like 45 degrees, 90 degrees instead of freeform. So I've got this image in here. I do not need to trace this one. This was a PNG. I'm gonna go over to the little star that says open the offset panel. We're gonna click offset. Ah, there we go. And you can see this red line that pops up. Oh, that was quick. Yeah. So with a PNG, it's really, really fast. With a JPEG, there's a couple extra steps in there. Because um, the PNG doesn't have a background. Um, it's just the line work. So right. once we've got that offset on here, we can change the distance of it. You can delete things on here just by clicking on them and then clicking the delete key. So if we click the offset, pops it back up and you can see here, we can make that cut line as close or as far away as we want. If you set it to zero, it will cut right on the line. I have found though with that, if there's just the slightest bit of movement on your paper in the cutter, sometimes it will cut off what you actually wanted it to keep. So I'll usually set it about 0 0.025. So there's a little bit of line around there. But you can see all of these little details and how difficult and time consuming that would be to cut out manually. Um, and we'll do the second one. Click the offset button. And I'm going to set that one at point 
0.025 as well and click apply. So now we have two of these things ready to go. I have already done that with everything over here on the Rabble, which is the one that we're gonna do the test cut on. Um, but I wanted you to see like a couple of different ways that you can do this in here. Once you get the image laid out on the page the way that you want it, you filled up your page as much as you want to, you're gonna go over to send. And this is where it's gonna actually send it right to the silhouette cutter. But there are some other little things that you can do in here as well. If there's something on this page, let's say you did like five different images and there's one of them that you don't want it to cut out, you can select just that image and tell it no cut. Hmm. Or you can tell it to just cut the edge and it will only cut, cut the outer edge and not the inner things. Uh, I was going to ask that. So if you didn't, if you didn't want to have cutouts in, in all of those internal spaces, right. would you would just, outline. yep, you can just click cut edge and it will only click, it'll only cut those outer pieces. Wow. And then when you're ready, you'll get your paper ready, get it into the Cameo Plus, and then once it's ready to load, and then hit send. Um, so I'm going to go over here to my real live one that we're going to actually. Well, my Zoom controls keep getting in the way here. We're going to go back to design. We're going to go to Ravel. This is the one that I printed um, and has been working on laminating. And I'm going to peel the backer off. So if you want to pop back over to my other camera, I can show you how I get this set up to do the actual physical cutting. There we go. Fantastic. So your silhouette comes with a cutting mat. Um, I have the 15 inch because I have the larger cameo. This is sticky um, and you can buy replacements of this. But what you'll do is actually just stick your paper on here right in the corner. You want to get it as straight as you can. So now as it's cutting, it just holds everything in place. That's really the only purpose for this. And then I'm going to line this up with the edge of the cutter. There's a little arrow right there. And I'm going to hit the up arrow button, which is going to load it into the machine. If it loads it crooked, which it sometimes does, just hit the down arrow button and it'll pull it right back out. Once it is loaded, I'm going to come back over to the computer to the um, send and choose. There's You can choose which material you're cutting, and there's one for image transfer paper. So just choose that one. It seems to work perfectly every time with no adjustments. And then you can test it on a corner of the paper if you want to, to make sure that it's all working correctly. I know that it is because I tested it before uh, we met. So I'm just going to hit send and it's going to send it via Bluetooth over to the cutter. And what it's doing right now is reading those registration marks. Sometimes it will tell you it didn't read them. Unload it reload it and hit send again. There doesn't seem to be any reason. Um, I talked to the silhouette, silhouette help, help desk and they said just sometimes it doesn't catch it. So now it's reading it, checking all of those corners. And then it's going to start cutting. Always so much suspense. So all it's doing right now is going around each of those images.
And then the other thing that you can do is um, before doing this each time, I'll usually do it on just a plain sheet of paper just to make sure that the registration is right where it's supposed to be. Because if you lay something out on the Silhouette software and print it, and then you move it before you cut it, it's going to be cutting it differently than what you've got printed, um, which may have happened here. So I'm going to print one more sheet. And I'm just going to print this on my regular printer um, so we can do a quick test. Because it doesn't seem to be doing it correctly. Um, because, of course, after 50 or 60 sheets of it this morning doing just fine, I may have bumped something. Uh, I'm going to print this baby. Murphy lives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always happens when you're doing a demo, right? Always, always. Okay, I'm printing. I'm just going to do the plain paper so you can see. And it's very possible that in the process of setting this up for the screen sharing, I might have bumped where one of the images was and knocked it a little bit off. So we'll get that to print real quick. But assuming that it cut it correctly, hit the down arrow, pull it out. It did do some of these. I think I bumped some of the images. Um, you just peel the paper right off. And now I have the perfectly cut out there you go. little images. So it looks like I did move, I shifted a couple of these because some of them are fine and some of them are a little bit off. So that is probably a user error more than anything. And even at that, the one that it that's a little bit off, it's at the edge of it. It's still completely usable. It's just not quite as even of a line. You can trim that by hand if you were so inclined too, right? Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I went from, I had an order of 100 mugs for this company, and it took me about two and a half hours to cut them all out by hand. Um, it took me about 15 minutes to cut them all out on the silhouette cutter. That was going to be my next question. It, it's a, so it's a tremendous time saving. It is. Even when something messes up like that on one page, it still ends up being so much less time um, for my user error to be fixed than it is for me to do it by hand. Yeah, I, I remember spending an hour cutting out one image with, with yes. the exacto knife. Yes. And if I've got something that's really detailed, it's just an incredible help. Okay, so I'm going to do this plain piece of paper here. So what, what is, Rebecca, what's the exact brand name of this device? This is the Silhouette Cameo Plus. Okay. And you can get these on Amazon or? Yeah, Amazon, yeah. Um, like Michael's, Joanne Fabrics, lots of different places have it available. Um, and the 12-inch the version is usually a little bit easier to get than the 15-inch version. I don't think they sell as many, and they don't have them as uh, in, readily in stock. Um, and I want to say it's right around $250, $300, something like that. I think like that's that what I heard, yeah. yeah. Right. So we had talked about you know, finding a part-time employee who would be able to do the cutouts for me. And it's like, but even if I paid somebody, like I don't pay anybody less than a, mini, a living wage. I don't pay minimum wage here. Um, do 10 we. or 15 hours and I paid for the machine. Um, so that would be like two or three projects probably would pay for it. And then I can also use this for cutting out all kinds of cool um, resist stickers to put on the clay and play with slip or under glaze and do some more interesting layered pieces. Um, and we also talked about doing 
screen printing with it as well because we can create a vinyl layer that goes onto a screen print and like screen print a texture fire that and then put a decal on top of that oh, and get wow. some really interesting depth So there's all kinds of fun stuff we've been able to kind of play with and test in the process of getting used to this. And it cuts tons of different materials. Like it will even cut um, hard stock and chipboard. So for doing some slab work, it's really handy to be able to use chipboard as a, as a um, template for cutting pieces out. Yeah. 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 And um, we've also used some stuff with chipboard and then clear coated it really well to use for measuring tools. So if I'm throwing a lot of the same thing, I can cut out a measuring tool that's like a height and a width and just throw the cup to the height, check the width, and we're good to go. It's not something that's going to last like for years, but for simple projects, it's really, really handy. And it'll do acetate sheets and just like all kinds of cool things that I'm I'm dying to figure out how to make those work with um, clay and layering and then doing a final step with the image transfers in really fine detail on top of it. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna cut one more with this copy paper here. So what I found with um, the, the one limitation with this is you don't want to get it super dusty. So if it is in the studio, then it covers for them because um, the clay dust will dull the blades pretty quickly. And the blades are like $12 or $15. So not terribly expensive to get them, but something to keep in mind. Um, or you can just create your own cover for it. And then the other thing is these sticky pads come with a piece of paper to cover them with. I put this back on every time because with the clay dust that's in here, I would end that stickiness pretty quickly. So there's a couple of little things that using it in the studio, we need some adjustments for, but I don't think it's, it has not appeared to be anything that's gonna um, be detrimental to using it for the long term. We've been using it for about a month now. And I think these sheets are, for the 12 by 12 sheets, I think I get three of them for $14 on Amazon, over $14. And those will last for hundreds of prints. I think I've done about 150 on this one. Huh. I was going to ask that how long they last. Yeah, no, it's, it's really reasonable. And sometimes you can wet them and the stick will come back. Okay. I'm going to tear my thin paper because it's a sticky one, but it, it is cutting correctly now. So loading okay. the loading the paper into the Cameo straight, I think, is probably the biggest challenge that I've had with it. And sometimes the software glitches, but none of them have been serious. And it's still been so much less time than cutting detailed things by hand or cutting a lot of things by hand. Yes. <laughs> it's been, it's actually been kind of fun. <laughs> so that, this is, I think, great. I think um, a lot of our users are going to be excited about this. Yeah, I hope so. What I've done is, is it's, it's a pain. You know, now a lot of my, of what I do is, you know, test. I mean, doing, you know, test tiles. And so I just right. cut them out and slap them on. But right. for some of the pieces I've done, you know, my own um, cutting out has taken the most time, and and yeah. one little slip with the exacto knife, and you're done. <laughs> right? Yes, you absolutely, over again. absolutely. Yeah. And you can kind of when you do that outline, you can go in and actually pick which outlines you want it to cut and which ones you don't. So if you want to get detailed with it, you can modify those cut lines. And um, I think the term for it was modify cut lines when I searched for it. But you could go in and just be like, I want this part cut out and this part cut out, but I don't want this part cut out. And you could actually click on that no one cut. line and delete it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that where you select no cut? In yes. The menu? Yeah. Yep. 
So all of those all of those cuts on the one image are grouped together. You can ungroup them and then you can select the individual ones and click uncut or don't cut. Um, so it's been cool to be able to figure out where I can have, especially if I do these on a matte glaze, if I have a matte glaze with the image on it and then that flux has the sheen to it, it's been fun to play with where I have it open so that it shows the matte or where I don't have it open and it shows that gloss texture. Um, and then the edges being so precisely cut out has made a big difference as well in the customer response to it. Because um, every once in a while, a customer will say, oh, well, I can feel the edge of this, which to me is just part of the process, um, but is different from what we were doing with the iron oxide transfers before where it completely melted into the glaze and you couldn't feel it. So as we've transitioned those customers from the iron oxide transfer to the black, we've had a little bit of education about that flux line that you can feel around the edge of it. And this has completely made that question go away because it's so precise that it suddenly becomes not noticeable compared to my you hand know, You don't see it, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and we've had we've I've had some users, you know, ask about the cut line. I mean, the, the, not the cut line, the, the flux edge. Um, yeah. This is going to be great for them. Right. Uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I know what they're talking about. I say, well, you know, folks do a bunch of different things to get around it. Um, but I think this may be the most effective solution right here. Right, because it ties it into a design element instead of, um, well, that's just what happens. Yes. It becomes, it becomes part of that design because now you've got your black image with that little line of clear around it, and right. it looks very intentional. Right, yeah. And doesn't, it doesn't really raise any questions we've found. All right. I thank you. This has been very yeah. educational. Um, we're going to put this out on YouTube and we'll post it on the website, right, Karen? Yes, Excellent. absolutely. And yeah. as we figure out little fixes for some of the software glitches that we hit today, um, I can do a screen record of that and post that as well, and I'll let you know. Um, or if we discover something new and fabulous. Ah, yes, record. we're all about new and fabulous. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm looking forward to really being able to push the limits of this um, and play with all the different ways that we can layer it onto a pot using the silhouette cutter and finishing with the transfers. Now, you have you have two printers. You have two surprints, right? You have a yeah. 330 and you mm -hmm. have a 3500 or 3710. 3710. 3710, 30, 30, which replaced the 3500. Yeah. Did you get Did you get the blue toner? I oh, haven't gotten that one yet. No. Um, I figured we'd work out all of our our learning curve with it first, and then we'll add the blue in like as a summer this thing. This is a blog prize for you. I'm just I'm going to send you one. Oh well, just, thanks. To, <laughs> well, to thank you for this. This is um, very worthwhile. Yeah, it's been really fun having. Um, the extra tools to kind of go along with it. And it also makes me wonder, why didn't I do this years ago? Yes. Because yeah. I think you and I met at um, Ensika in either Kansas City or Pittsburgh. It might have been Kansas City. It's been Probably a while. Kansas City. Yeah, that was, that was really the first launch of the 3500. Okay. And, I mean, I was blown away with the response. I mean, I had... I sold the printer right off the table, you know, the demo right. printer. Um, and so that was, that was, I, I missed it this year. The, this year was not just between us. It was not very well done, but, but I got to give them a break because it was brand new with COVID and having to do it all online. You know, it's a, right. a lot to learn, um, but right. the, probably one of my favorite trade shows that I've ever done in my career with all the, potters and the students and teachers um I just have great fun so anyway yeah. i thank you for your time my um, pleasure we can do another one when we learn we have some new things to to teach folks absolutely right all right thank you thank you i appreciate it same here <laughs>